I'd like to start off by first thanking Worth Phoenix for inviting me here. It's always a pleasure to uh, speak to everybody at these conferences, especially about open source, which I'm uh, very passionate about. I'm here to speak about Cacti, but not so much Cacti, the product, the core, but the evolution of Cacti and how it's branched out from its base roots of just graphs. Um, uh, what is Cacti? Cacti is basically a complete front-end graphing tool for RD tool. Uh, anything you can do in RD tool, you can basically use Cacti to create, whether it's uh, line graphs, area graphs, stacks, virtually anything. Uh, the origi origins of Cacti uh, started with our founder, Ian Barry. Ian uh, basically started Cacti as a high school project, a uh, science fair. He uh, created it, won first place with Cacti, and from there went into a full-blown project with it. Um, basically, he brought me on in uh, about six years ago. I started working on Cacti as we were using it at work, and I found that you know it does graphs great, but monitoring isn't all just about graphs. Uh, so I wrote a plugin architecture from Cacti based upon the uh, squirrel mail architecture I helped architect way back in the day. And I brought this in and created uh, the plugin architecture, and it's just expanded from there to what it is today. Uh, there's many, many useful plugins. There's some plugins written by the Cacti group itself. There's some plugins written by uh, multiple developers out there. Today we have well over 100 plugins for Cacti. Now, if you're used to Nagios, Nagios has its term for plugins. But it's kind of different than what the Cacti is. Nagios plugins are more like the scripts and the ability to uh, pull data. Whereas Cacti plugins are kind of like the Nagios modules and add-ons. They're sometimes even full-blown apps bigger than Cacti itself. Uh, this is more the uh, agenda itself. Uh, basically, all Cacti does is it stores configuration data for RD tool in a MySQL database and then all data itself is stored in RRD tool. So you're going to have all your standard stuff. You can take these, uh, any RRDs from anywhere. So if you're pulling data in Nagios or anywhere else, you can take those and then use Cacti to graph that data, which is what a lot of people use today already. And it's a front end, and everything is completely PHP based. It's easy to plug in, all based upon open source. And you're able to maintain your graphs, your data stores, uh, round robin archives, everything in Cacti, and use Cacti to even gather that data. Uh, any way you can pull data via SMP, PHP scripts, Perl. I mean, if you write a script to SSH into a server, run a command and pull that data back, if you can get that data back to Cacti, we can graph that data and do performance and everything else on it. You know, what is Cacti really is graphs. There's tons and tons of graphs and configurable in any way you want, whether you know background colors, line, stack, everything, even how the data itself is presented on the graphs, whether you want real numbers, you want aggregates, everything. Uh, I think I covered most of this. Uh, we started back in 2004 actually pulling in real releases of Cacti. Uh, basically, from there, just widespread global use. Uh, that's the Cacti team itself. We actually have eight developers for Cacti. We have two based here in Europe, one based in Canada, and five based in the uh, US. We meet uh, once a year as an organization in California to have our annual meeting, and that's when that August uh, 3,000 or 300 and something commits was actually done. We generally go meet, all gather together, whether it's at a bar, a conference room, or somewhere, and to sit down and program for like eight hours a day fix all the bugs, uh, get ready for our next release. Uh, some early screenshots of Cacti. The important thing you'll want to notice on here is the top up here. This is how Cacti started. There's basically two little things. Console, which is all your configuration, and then graphs, which is graphs. Not much to it. Uh, the plug architecture I built was based upon the squirrel mail architecture I had helped uh, building squirrel mail when I was part of that project. And it was a simple PHP-based drop-in plugin architecture, 50 lines of code. And that 50 lines of code has helped expand Cacti further than we'd ever uh, hoped to. Uh, we since then upgraded it, moved it from flat config files to a huge back end and everything else. 
but it basically implements a series of hooks in the cacti to where if you write a plugin for cacti, all you have to do is call that hook, and then you can do anything there you want with that portion of cacti, uh, manipulate it any way you want. Uh, some of the popular cacti plugins out there, uh, you have Boost, which is a performance enhancing. Basically, one of the big problems for large-scale either ROD tool uh, implementations where you have tons and tons of graphs, we have um, some, dis some ones out there that have you know, 120,000 hosts monitoring with a cacti install, and then you have 500,000 uh, data points. Well, when you go to write all that data back to our tool, you're making single little points of data commits, which just thrash your disk. So Boost basically fixes that problem by caching everything in memory, and then at a set time period, then writes it all in one swipe. It uh, greatly helps uh, very, very large uh, uh, deployments. Uh, T-Hold, and this is based on, I'm going to go over some of these in uh, detail in a little bit. T-Hold itself is basically a learning module. You're thresholding. Uh, you have Mac Track, which is an IP Mac uh, tracking device. Basically, it goes in, it connects to your switches and your routers, and corresponds all where this IP address is connected to this Mac address on this switch. Uh, logs and there's a little bit of performance data about that. Weather Map, which is your interactive network maps. Uh, I'll show some screenshots of those. Nectar, which is your email reporting. Uh, Real Time, which is you know. With Cacti and other monitoring tools, you're pulling data every five minutes, every one minute, every 30 seconds, whatever you configure it to, but sometimes you have to see that data right now. Well, that's what real time is. You can click on it, it'll pop that, that graph and actually pull the data in real time on a set interval, either five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever you want to see. Uh, Syslog. Syslog is basically our implementation. It's not going to replace anything like Splunk or anything for really large scale, but it's an easy way to go in and configure and see all your Syslog messages in one place and alert on that data and filter that data to what you really need. Uh, HMIB is basically a cacti resource. It basically pulls in all the data. This is how many Windows hosts you have. This is how many Linux. This is how many, what processes are running on every one of those, uh, things of that matter. You have Config Manager, which will actually connect to your routers, pull down your configs, uh, commit those to SVN repositories, uh, checks for changes, anytime changes are made, send out uh, emails with the actual changes, things like that. Uh, Discovery is our plugin that was created for automating, basically pulling in by either scanning a network or connecting to uh, pretty much anything and pulling in your host and then adding them to Cacti for you so you don't have to do that. A monitor is a simple dashboard monitor, basically used by a lot of data centers. Basically, this shows host and up and down status on it and audio alerts, which is really important uh, when people aren't watching the screen itself. And then Automate, which is a graph and tree automation tool. OK, so, so plugins by example. T-Hold itself is our alerting module. You know, graphs are great. You know, graphs are, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, but if you have a thousand pictures, you never know which one you need to be looking at. So you need alerting. And with T-Hold itself, you're able to alert on basically anything. We have three different types of thresholds you can create. You have your high and low, so you can say, if it goes above 80% or CPU, I want an alert on this. And you're able to set a static time for that. So if it goes above 80% and then it stays at 80% for five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever you want, this, that's when I want to alert because I don't want to know about every little spike. Then you have a secondary threshold which has a, that same static alert at 80%, but it's time-based. So I may want to know, you know if it's spiking. So I want to do a floating time base where over the last 20 minutes, if it spikes above 80% CPU, then I want an alert on it. And that thing will reset itself. And then our third one is our baselining, which is more your dynamic thresholding, where you say, if I'm a, I do the average over the last two days, and if I go 10% over that average over the last hour, then that's when I want my alerts. And we're moving this also to escalation and to basically instead of right now we have emails. And as you can see, this is an email where you get an email to the graph and the actual graph in the email and the status of the alerts. But we're moving beyond that to escalations to where you can say, 
At five minutes, I want to do a restart of the service on the server. At 10 minutes, if it's still alerting, I want it to go to the sysadmin. And if that sysadmin hasn't fixed the problem in 30 minutes, I want to send the email over to the manager so he knows that this problem really needs to be looked at, that either someone's not fixing it or it needs to be escalated somewhere else. Uh, this is MacTrack. MacTrack's really interesting, and I got a couple examples of how this can be used. But you see, you actually have your switches here, and then you have your IP address as a switch. But then it has all the IP addresses and MAC addresses and what type of device and everything for that switch, what VLANs they're configured for. It basically connects and pulls everything about your routers and switches and what's connected to them. And you're able to go through and do searches based upon time. So uh, one example we had where we had someone at a previous job who connected their Dell Axiom to the network, which was an outside device and was supposed to. So we got an alert because you know, you can alert based upon um, MAC address types and other devices and things like that on what you want to see and what you don't want to see. So we got an alert that someone plugged it in. We take that in, we put, or take the IP address or the MAC address, type it in at the top. It tells us exactly what switch port that device connected to, and then we're able to go hunt down and figure out where the actual problem was and where they connected the device and who did it. Uh, another plugin that we have, and this one's really great for data centers, is WeatherMap. WeatherMap is basically any data you have in Cacti that you want to display visually on like a data center wall or anything like that, you can display it in WeatherMap. So as you see, we have basically our core router here, you have other routers here, and it's basically showing graphic, and these are all dynamic in between to where it shows, you know, we're running 16 meg out here, two in, and the actual colors and the size of the arrows change based upon the actual severity. So if I look up and just glance and see something red up there because of the color chart, I know that we're having a problem somewhere and we're hitting a bottleneck. And with this, you're able to not just do network traffic, CPU, things like that, because as you can see, we have latency and other things on here. You can actually go in and say, okay, I want to see hard drive latencies. I want to do anything. You can put any background image. You could put an image of Google Earth, anything on there, and display your stuff on there and do temperatures. Virtually anything you pull in cacti can be displayed in a useful way. Uh, here's another example of this where they actually have their different servers and everything else with their network connections and things like that. Nectar. Nectar is, you know, Cacti is built by system admins for system admins. You basically, you see, we wanted the data we wanted and that was what we want. But we know managers like to see graphs. They like to see all the little pretty pie charts and things like that. Well, Nectar was really built for that. You know, you log into Cacti, you look at two or three different graphs a day. You know, if you want to see those same exact graphs in your email every single day, you can have it pull them and email them to you at a specific time. So you just have them right there. You don't have to log into the system and go check and click on the trees and everything else. Uh, you can then specify different graphs. You can add in, you know, different information. You can have it pull information and insert it into the page. Uh, nothing really uh, complicated. Uh, this is an example of the real-time plugin. This plugin itself basically allows you to go through, click on, you have your normal Cacti page here. You can click on a uh, real-time link there. It pops up the, the uh, graph you're looking at in real-time. And then you can even have multiple different ones so you can correlate. So you see we have two real-time graphs here. We're trying to determine what's causing both a CPU and a, see if there's any correlation between the two. So you can watch multiple different devices in real time to see where the actual problem, see if it's going across multiple things. Syslog. This plugin itself is actually a very, very large plugin. The code base on it is about half the size of the Cacti itself. And basically what it's made for is kind of like Splunk or any of the other syslog collectors out there, where any of your syslog servers can forward to the Cacti server or you can even run this on a separate server for performance reasons, depending on the amount of traffic you have, and actually display the actual alert or syslog messages in one spot. Now, it color codes everything based upon the uh, severity of the uh, syslog messages. You have all your devices and everything over here. Uh, you can filter it down to any point in time. So if I want to see 2 o'clock on Monday what was happening, this would show me all the logs there. Now, the other important thing is log filtering. We can go in, 
we know there's a lot of different syslog messages we don't want to see. So you can basically go in and add removal rules, which will remove all of those junk logs out there that we won't want to see and only leave the important ones up here. So it basically narrows down the field so we can tell what's going on. Uh, you can also do alerting off of these. You can do time-based alerting. So I can say, well, if I get this message based upon this description, upon this uh, time period on this device or something like that, send me an alert. Or you can say, well, that same thing, I only want to know if that alert happens every five or five times every five minutes or whatever your specification, you know, during a time period. I only want so many alerts. And it helps out quite a bit. The, uh, there's a lot of other reporting that comes with this. So you can report, see reporting based upon how many types of each different alert. So for cron messages, you can see how many different cron messages you have in the log file for this time and things like that. Uh, let's see. Oh, HMIB. This is a very simple plugin. Basically, goes in, tells you know how many Linux, how many SUSE, how many Red Hat servers. Uh, lots of different. You can see each individual device for each type. Storage, so you can see what hard drives are on each server, what sizes, uh, processes. So I can click on any server in there and go and see what processes were running on that server at that time. So, for instance, if I have a, if I'm monitoring a user's computers instead of servers, and I want to see if anybody's running Mozilla, I can type in Mozilla in there, and it shows me every computer that has that process running at that time. Uh, you can do the same thing with uh, inventory. It pulls a lot of the hardware information and everything else, and then a convenient location for graphs for all these. So I can, for processes, I can see when those processes are running. Everything's graphed. So if I click on a device and say, Mozilla, when was this running on this device? It shows a graph of when that process was up and when it was down. So I can see that it ran between 2 and 4 o'clock. Other Cacti plugins. Cacti itself, uh, we're GPL version 2, which means as long as, you don't, I mean, as long as you abide by the license, you can write your own plugin and not have to distribute it, uh, not have to commit back. Now, we don't recommend that, but there are a lot of companies out there that use Cacti and use Cacti in that way, and it's grown really big because of that. A lot of them do contribute code back and everything else. Uh, this is a plugin written by uh, Platform Computing, which you can see up there. And this plugin is one of the core plugins they use for selling their software, uh, which is great computing. But this allows, shows you some of the stuff you can do, basically going in and setting up device nodes, uh, everything else, and basically reporting on every node in their cluster and all the job views and everything. It, uh, they're able to sp expand it out and actually do not just an RD tool graphs, you're able to expand it out and do pie graphs, you can do other flash bar charts and things of that nature. And one of the other things you'll notice is this isn't the original Cacti interface. You do not have the original Cacti interface up there. That's because there was a plugin written to rewrite the Cacti interface. Basically, because of a couple of small little hooks, you can virtually change how Cacti looks completely to integrate it into your own software. Uh, the state of Cacti. Cacti is alive and well. Uh, we are currently just released 8.8. .8. We're about to release 8.9 again. Uh, we stagnated for a little bit just because we were writing a development version, but things changed so much in that development version to get everything working perfectly. We had to uh, hold off on releases, but we started to backport a lot of those into our stable branch. So you're going to see a lot more frequent re releases of Cacti. Uh, eight nines expected out either now or within the week. And then we're going to be pushing for 1.0 fairly soon. The, uh, we have integrated the plugin architecture directly into Cacti, whereas before you had to download Cacti, then download a patch, and then download plugins for it just to get it all to work. But well, we integrated it completely into Cacti, so you don't have to do any of that. Uh, we started to phase in all the features into Cacti from the uh, 1.0 branch, which is going to give you a lot of stuff like we're working on distributed polling, we're working on uh, host winter forecasting, predict, the ability, the ability to go in and see not only this is what is uh, set at now, based upon trending, this is where it's going to be in the future. And then the ability to alert on that. I don't want to know if I'm over CPU now. I want to know if I'm going over CPU or going to go over disk space. Uh, we're also looking for full RD uh, support for compute, uh, VDEF, X-Access, and just about everything else. 
Um, as I said before, we did over 200 commits at our meeting uh, last August. Add that into the rest of the commits. We did over uh, almost 400. We are working on site support. So basically, right now the problem we have is you can create a graph tree, and in that graph tree is all your graphs. But you don't have the ability to go in and say, this is my Dallas site, this is my Europe site, this is my Italy site, whatever like that. So you don't have that support now to do that. And one of the other big things we're working on is internationalization. Uh, I think I had a screenshot, uh, maybe it's next, that will actually show you part of that, that we're actually working on that. We have committed international uh, people to translate those. And most of the support is already there and working in our 1.0 branch. We just have to backport it. Uh, we're also working on multiple times of support. Right now, what you have set in PHP is your time zone, but that can be a problem when you have someone in USA looking at it. They don't want to know what the uh, time in the USA is. They want to know what that graph is looking at at their local time. So we're working in time support and getting that to work with RD tool itself. And we're also working on a lot of large site uh, performance import, uh, improvements. Basically, we have a lot of large cacti installs out there. I think our largest one now is 120,000 hosts with anywhere between, it changes, uh, half a million to 750,000 data points pulled. And that's in a five minute interval. Uh, with Cacti, it's running on a cron job. So every five minutes, you're able to schedule that to where it's either five minutes, one minute, all the way down to 10 seconds, whatever you actually prefer. But you have to be able to fit your host within that po polling period. Uh, one of the other important things we added recently is used to be everything was at a one minute poll, or if you did one minute, everything polled at one minute. Well, that's great for CPU and stuff, but I really don't need to pull my disk space every one minute. I can pull that five minutes, 10 minutes, and you're able to dynamically change everything to pull at different time periods. And basically, the, the event scheduler we have will actually pull them at the correct time. We're also currently redeveloping the site to be completely CSS and AJAX driven, which will help with the theme plugins and things like that. And it'll also help with a lot of the dynamic uh, sorting and everything else that everybody loves with uh, Web 2.0. Uh, this is currently what the 1.0 branch looks like. I actually have the, the drop down with some of the languages in it there now. Now, the site design itself is not set in stone. We actually plan on having a professional come in and redesign it. Basically, because we're programmers, uh, we're back end programmers, we're not CSS programmers, we're not good at design. So we're going to have someone professionally design Cacti and actually upgrade it to what it should be for uh, Web 2.0 and beyond. Oh. And now we're into the questions and answers section. Thank you very much, Jimmy. Any questions from the audience? Yes, here. Just for curiosity, why the O in front and not one? Why did you start uh, with the O dot version? I'm not sure why he started with it, just because I think it was beta to him, because it was never fully done when he started with it, and we kind of went from there. Uh, the O, it was even worse, because we have 0.8.6J. I mean, it gets pretty complicated, which is why we changed. And when we go to 1.0, we're changing from direct 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, there will be no sub-levels with that beyond. Good question. Will it be, will it be implemented or? Distributed? Uh, yes, we actually have a few plugins that are working with a distributed architecture. They're not where we want them to be, so we haven't integrated them into the core code yet. But we are working on distributed architecture for Cacti itself because we want it to be more dynamic. Most of the stuff out there now still relies on a central Cacti server to forward the data to where the uh, MySQL database is. But we want something more dynamic that doesn't, basically more like a floating master, I would say, where if the main server dies, everything else can keep working and keep pulling and delivering that data to where it needs to go. Hey, I, I, I got a question about the 64-bit counters. Okay. Uh, it, currently, at this 
Lest this uh, corrective version does not work well. Are you planning to do something about that? As far as 64-bit uh, network counters, it doesn't work well. Uh, I thought it was working fine with it. Uh, if you can forward me a query at my email address, it should be on the slide when you get to presentation. Uh, I'll glad to answer that. I don't have the answer right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we also have a very vibrant forums and a website where questions are answered. You know, 24 hours a day. We have over, uh, I think, 50,000 users. A couple hundred thousand posts on there already. Okay, so thank you very much. If there aren't any further questions. <laughs>